Welcome back to Evergreen Valley on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 6 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Right off the back of the last episode, I'm going to go out and get the couple of contracts done. I've got one for cultivating and I've got one for harvesting, which we're going to do, although I'm going to have to lease a corn header, which, yeah, that's going to negate what we're doing. Actually, where am I going to? Oh, sorry, field 11, not this one. Next turn in, then we'll head down. And we'll get the cultivating done on here. And, uh, yeah, do just yeah, some normal stuff that needs to be done. And then we'll skip ahead to October 2. And we'll see how we're looking with regard to the coal mine. How the products are running down and how much product we've got. Then we'll look at places we can sell stuff. And the whole while we'll be picking up bits and bobs as when we can. I'm just thinking that the cotton field, it's not a very big cotton field. So even if we get a contract for that, I don't know how it will pay out. We'll see. I'll definitely need to borrow equipment if we do that because I don't have a cotton harvester. That is the only downside, I think, for um, for doing start from scratch work. Is I mean, although this wasn't start from scratch, we did come on here and we started with the start equipment. But um, I think I, I sort of mentioned in the previous episode when you've got um, a lot of processes on a map which are all new and you want to try them all. Um, the two aren't particularly conducive if you're playing just yourself um, and you can put in money and do whatever you want to do um, you can just jump in and buy stuff and do whatever you want but it's a lot trickier when you've got to build up that money first to get to those processes it takes a little while to get there um, but you will get that tipping point where you are making money as you start to build those processes and you get more of them as the money starts to roll in you then find you can afford more and do more a lot quicker but it just takes a little while yeah like that field there it's got a lot of weeds on it that'd be a cracking weeding contract on there so while i'm doing this i am um, I, I watched the second june um last night they had it on the old um amazon prime movie premiere thing so I thought, I was going to go to the cinema and see it with one of my daughters. She went with her siblings. I didn't get an invite. <laughs> That's alright, I went to see Ghostbusters with her. And then it popped up, so I thought, oh, you know what, why not I'll watch it at home? So I watched it last night. Um, it's quite a long film. don't know if anyone else has seen it. I only ever read the first book, and that was years ago. I mean, a long, long time ago. And one thing I found from the book was... The, uh, the amount of description everything is described everything is explained in great detail I mean there's a lot in all of them from what I gather like I said I never read the, the first one because I was, I was only young then and it was that I think it was when I'm going to say the first June film but the June film that I recall um, was it with Carl McLaughlin who was the guy that was McLaughlin something like that wasn't it anyway um, as a younger man and I remember the film coming out as a kid and, and oh, I'll read the book and I found it really heavy going as a child, you know. And something I think I might go back to, especially maybe audio book. Um, the first June film I watched and I wasn't raving and then I watched it a second time probably six months later and thoroughly enjoyed it. So I thought, you know what, I'm really looking forward to seeing the second one, the amount of famous people that are in it and that kind of thing. Um, and like I say, I think the, the first book, I can't speak for the other two, is, is very explanation and description driven lots of dialogue lots of um yeah i mean dialogue lots of conversation you know um which gives you a full understanding and, and very comprehensive i mean it doesn't leave a lot to the imagination it is all explained and, and it has to be because it's such a complex it covers everything the sort of economics of what's happening the the factions the houses the they're in intricate detail i mean so much stuff but what i found and this was one of the things a lot of people said when the first june came out the new the first of the new june should i say it's always been a very difficult one to tackle because of that so anyway roundabout way of saying what's the second one i wasn't raving i i as far as a blockbuster film goes, ticked all the boxes. Action sequences, phenomenally done. I mean, absolutely incredible. Um, 
the actors in it, the, you know, what was going on. But I just found it jumped. The, I'm not saying the editing was bad, but it was obviously supposed to be that way. But it wasn't even like a montage of stuff. You know, there was bits where a scene would start and it would sort of explain what was going to happen. And, you know, when Paul Atreides, I don't know, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, has got to go off on almost kind of like a quest. And then it, it jumps to another part. And then it jumps to another part with no real explanation of the jumps, no real explanation of what happened in the previous part. Um, all in a fashion to get you driven towards the sort of final sequences or the later sequences in it and it's and even doing that it's still a very long film and like I say I'm not taken away from the fact that the bits that are you know good are incredibly good but I don't know how everyone else felt about it did anyone, if anyone else has seen it did, did you find it disjointed or was that just me I don't know because when my daughter came through she said oh you're watching it I said yeah I asked her how she felt about it at the cinema and she said, you know what, she said, I thought it was just me. I thought maybe I was not fully understanding what was happening. And it's one of those ones you've got to then really delve into all the bits that aren't in the film, all the bits that aren't shown, all the, you know, the, the jumps between. You've got to kind of extrapolate yourself what might have happened, what has happened, you know, I don't know. It's just what's on my mind at the moment. I thought, while I'm doing this, I'll come out, I'll, I'll jump in this and um, get this cultivating contract done. Um, oh, the other thing I was to say was we got our compensation for the contract. Um, I won't say there was any nefarious activity going on. Apparently, it was um, an accounting error. I, I, you know, I'm not going to push that. I'm not going to accuse anyone of anything, but it was certainly a problem. And when I went back and, and checked, checked my dash cam footage, um, it, it definitely jumped. <laughs> it definitely jumped. And the contract payment changed, which was very dodgy. But anyway, we've got our, we've got our conversation. We've got our money. So we're all good. We, we are whole again. We haven't got to worry. So anyway, I just thought to talk about that while I was doing it and uh, get a bit of the cultivating done. And then we will... Um, skip ahead I'm not sure I'm going to um, don't know I might run another set of um, concentrate to make some more liquid fertilizer to sell um, just to bump the money up a little bit I'm just concerned if we go through into October 2 and the coal miners used a lot of the um, a lot of the resources we took up there because we took up the mining equipment the maintenance equipment the big the big vehicle spares um, and we'll see how our generators chugging away as well if it's going to be something that's going to be quite resource heavy every month I, mean, I need to be making money and once that has reached a point where that's producing enough stuff then hopefully that will become self-sufficient the money I make from selling the products will cover the cost of the resources going in that's what I'm hoping we'll see how it goes It's funny how you can um, you kind of get caught in that when I was away with Miss Silly P. When you're doing um, Let's Plays that involve other things other than just farming. And I love doing the forestry and all the stuff. I don't mind doing the productions. I don't, you know. Um, but I've often found if I go away on holiday and I don't take my PlayStation with me and I don't make any videos, I really miss playing the game. I miss... And when you come back... I find simple jobs like this and looking at the vehicles and machinery and driving the tractors and driving around maps and I miss that. I, I know it sounds really weird, not, not weird but sad probably, but I really do. And even though the last week when I was away I took my PlayStation and I tried to keep up with the modern views, kept up with the map tours, although some of them were a sort of day late because of the internet connection we had while we were away. Um, I miss the farming, I miss the let's play side of things quite a lot because the, the mod review stuff is kind of bomb 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 bomb, you know, bish bash bosh. Here's the stuff, here's what it does, on to the next one, here's the stuff, here's what it does, bomb, on to the next one. And it's kind of, you get a feel for the, the equipment, the machinery and, and how it operates. But you, I, I just miss this, the playing side of it, you know. Um, yeah. 
And what I was saying actually the other day, this is going to be, this whole episode, I'm going to do a short episode. This episode will be 15 minutes long. It will just be me doing this field and we'll talk. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I don't mention everything I said about I've been watching Fallout. Um, I watched the new Fallout series. And I remember playing, like I said, I remember playing the early, early Fallout series. I never played Fallout 4. And there's Fallout 76 as well. But because the the series has come out, they've popped back up again on the PlayStation Store. Um, Fallout 76 was free. Fallout 4 was £3 something. And I think for the season pass was £11 something. Which was down from something like 70 quid or whatever. And you got, uh, I think, all of the DLCs. So I think for £14, £15, I got the game Royal DLCs. So I thought, you know what? That's really cool. I really enjoyed the series. And um, I'll, I'll jump on and I'll play a bit of Fallout. So I made my video yesterday, and there were no mods yesterday. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to have the afternoon to myself. I'm, I'm not going to start making the next video for this. I'll play a little bit. And the problem is, it's another one of those ones, like every big game, you know, um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I loved that. Um, Skyrim, when I was playing that on VR, I've mentioned that a few times. Any of those, the big games, you know the games where you've got things where you need to craft things, you need to search things, go through every locker, every drawer, I mean there's so many games like that I've played. Um, and so many facets to the game and so many things you can do and learn and experience and travel. You're talking hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. So I played yesterday afternoon. Loved every minute of it. It was absolutely fantastic. And it's, an old, it's a PS4 game. It's not a PS5 game. Um, but played it on the PS5. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But came to that realisation that, again, as I always say, I haven't got the hours in the day. I, have, I, I would love to spend hours and hours and hours um, playing it, but every hour I'm playing that and just playing the game, I'm not making videos. Um, so yeah, it's a tricky one. You know, what do you do? But you know, if you haven't ever played it, and it is really cheap at the moment on PlayStation Store, jump on and have a go. You'll absolutely love it. Um, I say you'll absolutely love it. It might not be your cup of tea at all, but um, it was very cool. And I have to say, for a PS4 game, I know I'm playing it on PS5 and you know, all that kind of thing, but the graphics were very good, and it, it was, you know. It was kind of immersive, you kind of get into the story, and especially because I think because I watched the series and I had that kind of bug and I saw it, I thought, oh, you know what, that'd be really cool. Um, and what I like about it is the series had really faithfully recreated a lot of the bits from the game, you know, I mean, properly done it. And I know they had, um, because like I say, I remember playing the early bits and I'd seen things over the years, but it, yeah, really did a good job. Anyway, that being said, I'm going to carry on with this. I just thought, while these things were on my mind, I would chat about them. Okay, corn contract. I've delivered one full load here. It's on our site, so like I say, unless I'm very quick on the trigger, um, if there's anything left over, I don't know. We're at 79% of the contract complete, with only a little bit left in here. So I'm almost at the point where I think, you know what, should I just let it run out? I'm not sure I can take anything out of it. I might be able to. We'll let it run down, the contract will complete anyway. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're left with about four or five thousand litres over and above the contract, I think. Let's double check and we'll see what that says. Bottom right, corn 5,185 litres. Contract is complete. So, what we've got to see now is will this actually complete? <laughs> 
because the previous one didn't. <laughs> so that's same 5,343. Whew, okay. Excellent stuff, money's gone up a little bit. So I wonder if I put this under that spelt, that 5,000 is. So I don't need it, I'm not making pig food at the moment. And we can't make corn flour on this one. I don't think we can, can we? Um, I'm sure I checked this, didn't I, in the last episode? I don't think we can. No. Yeah, the corn is if we're going to do pig food. That's why that's stored in there, um, which we're not doing at the moment, so... I don't know. I mean, like I say, that spout is there. We can certainly try. It's not something I normally do. If I put something into um, a production, normally I just run it and then until it runs out. Oh yeah, okay. That's right, I'm going to take that and sell that. So what I need to do now is find a good price. For the corn. Okay. It's not particularly great anywhere, is it? Um, Northern Railroad, but I mean, sent off by train. We've got to rent the train. Grain elevator, 473. I'll take it there. It's not a huge amount, but it's a bit of extra money in the bank. And I, so I'm not going to be using it, so I might as well get that delivered. Um, switch that to that. And I'll close the thing. Right, so, like I said, I'll probably see you now in October 2, and we'll check on everything, see how we're going. If we've got any coal, I guess I said then we could probably check. Coal price, I don't know what coal is selling for at the moment, or where. I'm assuming it's going to be at one of the, um, it's all these things, look. All the metal cables, but the buying the facilities is not cheap. The prices are pretty good on some, aren't they? There's also the trash situation as well. I want to run a production when we get some trash because I never did that on, on Frontier. We had um, all the bins you would go and collect, whereas this produces it. And obviously then there's the sawn marble. I want to do marble and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's interesting. 5,073... A concentrated liquid for some mm. iron ore, dirt, seeds, all the things. There we go, mineral coal. It's not worth a huge amount, but it's worth something at the end of the day. Big coal plant, sell everything. Small coal plant. The small coal plant's the one we're thinking of buying so we can produce electricity. But I think if we take it to, I suppose, Northern Railroad, we could stick it on a train, send it off maybe. So everything takes pretty much everything. That's the whole point of it. So anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. And we should have some more of our products that we should be able to load up and send off and that kind of thing. So I'm going to go sell that. And I suppose what I make from that will go a little bit towards the next load of um, liquid fertilizer concentrate. And then we'll run that through. Nice.
it's October 2, 7.41 in the morning. Things are getting exciting. Let's close the door. So, here's what's happening. We've got our cotton contract. That field I said, it's only a small field. I don't even know if we'll get a full bale. Well, I hope we do. Anyway, that, that one just there. I've got a ploughing contract. We've leased a plough for 400 and something to lease. Um, field 6, which is just over there. I'm going to check on our situation with regard to our diesel. That's not bad. 118 litres left. That was 200 litres went in. So we've used about 82 litres. We're going to go up to the coal mine and check on the facility and how much of our resources we've used compared to how much we've got coming out. But what is also very cool, I was doing a bit of a drive around in the pickup. And I realised something that I completely missed um, before, which we're going to utilise. Because the best price for coal at the moment is Northern Railroad. Now, Northern Railroad isn't actually showing um, on the map. That says Railroad, and up there says Railroad. And if you click on the prices page, where are we? There, Mineral Coal and Northern Railroad. The price is starting to dip, so we need to get onto that straight away. If I tag place... Let me go back up to here. It's that that's flashing, not there. So what we're going to do, we're going to head up to the coal mine. We're going to go and get our coal. We're going to come back here. We can rent a train here. And we're going to load onto the train there and then reverse it up onto there. Hopefully that'll work. I mean, like, it's trial and error. We'll see. But loading onto here is going to be something completely different, something I've never done before. And it'll... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully it'll work. And it was, I, it was one of those things I thought, I wonder if... And then when I went up there to check... I felt like an absolute buffoon, but you'll see. Um, so the other thing we've got to do as well is I've just loaded the next canola on. So we've got three canola oils ready to go. I'm not a snake oil salesman. I'm a canola oil salesman. I was hoping for some more contracts that would give us stuff to make flour, but I think once that runs out, that'll be it for this season. Where am I going? I don't want the diesel, I want this. These we can pick up by hand, and then what we'll do is we'll take these off to sell everything, and we'll get these sold, um, so we can get our spaghetti loaded in. I think I might stick another one on top of the uh, on top of the canola oil as well. Actually, we'll just get it all strapped. And these aren't heavy, so it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, actually, I need to turn that that thing off because you can see it. Uh, up there. Strap that down. We'll stick another one on top of there. That'll, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, there you go. You can see where our sell point is so we'll get that well and we're going to head up in the lorry go and get the coal and check this out and see how we're looking see if where i'm supposed to be collecting from is where i think i'm supposed to be collecting from we'll stick this up on there as well shall we yeah why not that's good to go so let's close that up it's a bit of weight over that axle but i'm sure we'll be fine and then what we'll do to finish off once we've sorted the coal situation out, we'll check everything out, engine off. Um, we'll get over and we'll get on with the cotton. And then I'll do the ploughing, I'll probably do the ploughing off camera. So, let's head up and check this out. I was open, that have got nothing in it. Everything's had a bit of a jet whoosh overnight. So we are going to swing by just to double check the facility to see how we're doing for our resources. So we'll do that, then we'll go down into the, the pit area, the open pit. Um, I did have some people message me actually, oh that's not bad, Nine seven. so we've barely used anything. And we've got, oh wow, okay. 21,900 litres of mineral coal. We've got some stones. Stones I'm probably just going to sell, take them to a debris crusher. Unless we find something else later on that requires them, there will be some facilities. The dirt and sand, we're going to leave that to keep storing. And the iron ore, same with that as well. We'll leave that all to store in. The coal is what we're going to be selling to start off with. Um, we're going to select to make some money, and we'll do it over the next couple of months, probably. Even if we have to replenish the stuff in here. And then what we can do um, at that point is... Um, I mean, we have got the generator producing electricity. I just wanted to get one of the um, coal refineries. This would be quite cool to have the uh, the processing plant as well. So we're going to head down into here. I'm sure this is right. <laughs> Whilst we don't own the land, the, the point where we have to collect the coal from is down here. 
and then we're going to take it up to load it on the train and what we'll do when we drive past we'll rent the train and um i say this is this is all new it's cool we have to do the loop round. there's no there's no quick route through there once you've bought this land you can actually if you cut the signpost down you can remove all these poles of coal but the, that's they're here for a reason they're supposed to be there actually we'll go this way around uh, yeah. I think we go under that end bit and this is where we collect our product from I hope I'm right well, this is going to be a short trip yes This is seriously cool. It's not the fastest filling, considering the size of the chute, but at the end of the day it's filling. And we're putting coal in. I'm trying to think, have I done coal before? I don't know, have, have I? I said we did ore on Frontier, I didn't do coal. Get it all in. There we go. <laughs> that feels heavy. <laughs> I know it sounds bizarre, but this is sort of struggling to get up to speed. You know what that suddenly reminded me of? <laughs> my Hornby, my Hornby railway sets. When you've got the um, the coal tender, it looked just like that. How bizarre! Well, not bizarre. It's coal. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? So again, this this is just this is not hypothetical. It should work because from, from what I've seen, and I'll I'll show you what I mean. Um, because I thought I don't want to really load up at the grain silo which I think we can put coal through the grain silo and the grain silo is right down to the south the transfer silo I want to do it up here and I'm thinking I have to use conveyor belts and stuff because there's not a loading point up here per se and then I can reverse the train all the way up to take up the cell point again it's not ideal but you know we can do that um, where do I want to go um, I think this way out I do want to swing round though the wrong way. No, I need to be up and over that bridge, but I'm going to go this way around just so I'm pointing the right way. And we can also go past the rent train point and we'll rent the train. If I was doing this, say normally, I would have gone straight up the other way, but just for the sake of uh, <laughs> thumbnails and stuff, you know how these things work. So, let's stop there a second and let's rent the train. Let's get that first. So, um, and when it says train is going to arrive soon, 4.24, <laughs> I mean, the, it's coming down. I don't know if it's going to reverse around the map or whether it's, it's doing its route round off, off the map, but... So I was yeah, so let me explain. So I'm thinking, okay, what do I do? I could get maybe conveyor belt. I saw that crane and thought, oh, that's cool. Um, I thought if I get a conveyor belt, I can unload onto a conveyor belt onto the train. We can do that, no problem at all. Then I turned around and I thought, oh, there's a bridge there. What if I could somehow manoeuvre the train to um, manoeuvre my lorry on the bridge to unload onto the train? So you know what? That might just work. And then. <laughs> I came around to have a look, and if you you probably already know this, um, I came up here and thought, oh, hello, hello, and then saw that sign. <laughs> How did I miss that before? So you can unload through the bridge onto a train, or by road, so you've got the train bit here, the road bit here. How cool is that? That's fantastic. Might need the sun to come up a little bit. Oh, no, that's, that's right in the way for a thumbnail, that, isn't it? 
So I told you, you become a photographer as well. You have to work out lighting and all sorts of stuff. So let's get the lorry up. And then hopefully we'll have the uh, the train will be arriving soon. And then maybe the sun will come up a little bit. Mind you, that being said, if I, if I speed up time to get the sun up, I might as well go and get the next bit of coal. just I did not even notice did not even notice how did I not notice that's absolutely crazy oh there'll be more unloads to do we're on tip side front so we're just waiting on the train now I say waiting on the lights waiting on the train this is so cool like I said though something a bit different isn't it That was good timing. And as if by magic. <laughs> so what we need to do is get in the train. Let's drive that forward. Do that for a minute. Oh no, trap myself. This is crazy. How cool though. So I guess this is where we see them. Let's unload it. We'll start. <laughs> that is crazy. Crazy cool though. I mean, that's not like there's a small sign either. How did I miss that? Why is that? Oh, yeah. Tip side. Yeah. There will be a bit more to go and collect, which I'll... Should I go and do that now? How much is there likely to be? There's nearly another 2,000 litres. I'm going to go and get it. And then we'll send the train off. Okay, let's do it. Let's see if we can send the train in reverse. <laughs> No, we had some problems on Frontier with it selling off, off, off screen. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. That should kick me off the train. Do you want to sell it? Yes, please. Fifty-nine thousand two hundred and seventeen. Leasing cost of the vehicle. We had the train sat there for a while. So to be fair, you know what? And we have got tons of resources still left in the coal mine chugging away to keep everything repaired as it needs to be to keep it all running um are we going to make our money back easily um if we're going to make that i will make more than every day because we didn't start till later in the day yesterday um october 1 so that's only half a month only not even half a month really um and then over the next few months of that we'll pay for the for the um coal mine or the actual coal mine not the mine itself but the coal mining facility that we're running that's absolutely fantastic and i'm so pleased with that how that works that's that's just awesome awesomeness i don't think i've encountered that before you unload into pits and stuff like that but i don't think i've ever unloaded off a bridge before awesome so and we head back down we're gonna go over the rickety bridge trip trap trip trap um making sure there's no trolls underneath and then I'm going to whiz over and we'll jump into the cotton harvest because it's right right there it's not far to go I'll get the cotton harvest done and I think then we'll be done that was what I wanted to get, get a couple of contracts knocked out um, make sure that's all running properly I just had real concerns that it would run through the, the um, resources so quickly and that we wouldn't necessarily make I mean we'll make good money it's not you know 
it's not ludicrous money which i think is the, the way it should be and obviously we've got other is whoa i did that before with the tractor as well we've got other resources coming out of there as well with stones and dirt and all that kind of thing so as we move forward if we can make a nice bit of money in that we can then start looking at like i said buying up other productions we can look at other things as we move forward the thing i was going to say was i mean i'm looking at the farm now thinking are we running a conventional farm or are we running a contractor's farm and i have to say i think probably more on the lines of a contractor's farm because we don't own a lot of land we haven't got a lot of machinery and equipment at the moment we don't have a lot of arable we've got this field here um we've got the equipment at the moment to do some contract work but not all contract work we do need to buy a plow um because like i say we have got a plowing contract to do i did take that pickup away um but we are running some processes we have got some stuff on the way um so i would say at the moment we're contractors we are providing services we are providing liquid fertilizer not what you would again we come back to that thing what do you what do you classify as a conventional farm what is a farm every farm is different and every farm not every farm but farms are diversifying farms are trying different things and i suppose you've probably got farms that started out as conventional farms and have been for maybe two three four five generations if not more and in the modern age where farms are diversifying they're finding the diversification becomes the main business and that the farming is almost a side business which provides the main business at that point it's curious how those things happen like i've said before with distilleries and cheese making and all, you know a lot of these farms that are doing these big productions and as the production of those things starts to expand and grow that becomes a bigger animal that becomes the bigger business and the farm almost then is, is the secondary um and it's, it's it's an interesting way of looking at things now isn't it how just that first step to diversification can lead to who knows what you don't really know do you right let's open this up so it's not a huge field but we'll see how we go whatever comes off it is whatever comes off it hopefully it'd be enough for either a full bale or a full bale and a part bale and what i don't want is a full bale and a bale that we can't unload so that's always a worry and what I would generally do, because you can unload a part bale, I'll look at how much of the field we've done and look at what we're doing here. If I get kind of halfway across the field and we've got enough to unload a part bale, I would rather unload two part bales than do a full bale and then have a load left that I can't get rid of. So it's, it's you know it's one of those things you just have to with with um, cotton keep an eye on how much of the field has been done compared to how much I don't. I reckon we might just get one, and it might even be a partial. I don't even know. If I'm just, I don't know. So I'm, all, I'm. I always find it difficult to to visualise, unless you do, unless you're a cotton farmer. If, if your let's plays, if your storylines, if your farms, you do a lot of cotton. I do it every now and again. I do a little bit for contracting here and there. It's not one of my primary um, crop types. I don't tend to do it a lot probably because the, the equipment is incredibly expensive and I don't think I mean I've got to a point before where I've had multiple harvesters running but when you're looking at nearly a million or up up you know up there you know, not exactly but you know high priced equipment running two three four cotton harvesters it needs to be a primary business the same with sugarcane technology isn't it you've got to be doing fields and fields and fields of the stuff This is a round bale, though, isn't it? So the round bales are tens, aren't they? And the squares are twenty, so it's the other way around. <laughs> oh God. It's been so long since I've done cotton. I can't remember. Anyway, regardless, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll lose a little bit of the contract, um, but what you often find is with cotton contracts as well, because cotton's worth a fair bit usually. Which I don't know where am I taking this? I'm not sure. Let's double check that. Um, 
anything over and above what the contract requires you tend to make a nice bit of money on cotton but again it depends on the size of the field as well um, that doesn't always work out like i said as so we caught farm it leaves me um, a little bit cautious sometimes right so pre-chamber into the main chamber it's tens isn't it i'm just looking at that bar at the bottom Right, I will see you when we've either got a partial belt on load, like so I'm going to keep an eye on what I should do now. Actually, I'm going to go back down the other way, because I need to kind of gauge this. I should have gone up and down the field, shouldn't I, really, to work out half, but we'll see how we get on. We'll see how this all pans out. I'm very pleased with the coal situation. That's, that's brilliant. That's worked out really well. Um, like I said, I have leased a plough for the contract, but I think I might buy one. I'm going to get one of the VSR modding sewer uh, ones, six metre, I think it's eight grand. Um, if we get more and more ploughing contracts on bigger fields, maybe I'll get something a little bit bigger, but the fields on here aren't that huge. So for the most part, I think we'll get away with what we've got. And the fact we are getting ploughing and cultivating contracts come up, we are getting a nice range of contracts, so yeah, I'm sure we'll all be fine. We'll all be fine, all of us. We'll all be fine. So, I've just completed. As it turned out, it wouldn't let me unload a partial bale. Maybe it's only the 20,000 litre ones. I thought I thought it was, had been changed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We've got two full bales with 1,300 litres. So even if I had tried to split it down, maybe I could have got three three quarter bales if it had let me unload partials, but it didn't. So we've got the Kubota, we've got the bale trailer. Let's head off and grab the second bale. And these are going to sell everything, so we'll take them. Um, hopefully... I mean, with only 1,000 litres left in there, I would say this is absolutely going to be enough to um, complete the contract. And then we're done. Bit of cultivating, bit of harvesting, bit of... Uh, coal mine work, bit of unloading in a different way. Right, pop that away. Take this over. See how we get on. Tell you what, I don't tend to use Kubotas very much either, but I should do. There are some nice Kubota mods out there. Same as when I used the McCormick. Um, on Elmer. I really liked that and I loved the sound of it as well. It was absolutely fantastic. That'd be interesting because we've got a bit of we've got a few Kubota packs, haven't we? Doing a Kubota farm, you know, just having Kubo Kubota. I don't know because there's, there's yeah, there's a few different tractor brands I haven't really used, and again we're three years in or in the third year. Take it nice and steady. The last thing I want to do is catapult these bales into the into the uh, into the sea, into the river. You see what I mean? Oh, that's not good. Oh, don't get caught in there. Do not get caught in there. Oh, blimey, that was close. Hopefully, a little bit of profit. Watch out for the tree. Um, why is that stopped? Now, that only normally happens if there's something in it. I'm not still renting that. 
Why is that sat there? That's a bit worrying. Is there anything? Shouldn't be anything in it. It's not showing us having anything in it. Oh. Something I didn't check actually. Oh, yeah, there is a point here, isn't there? I was going to say, can you unload into the uh, the depot from the train? And there is a point there. Is that shown on the map? <laughs> I'm one of those days. No, it's not, is it? Maybe that will pop up if you buy the facility. Or is it for that one? That's got to be fear, hasn't it? Mind you, that looks like a cult. That's what I suddenly thought, actually, while I'm up here. Just because we used the, we were able to use the bridge up there, we've got a bit up here. Yeah, with this here. Is that an unload point? Should be, shouldn't it? Really? Guess we'll find out if we buy the big facility at any point. Oh no, I did that wrong. <laughs> I'm going to go back and get in the Kubota. <laughs> Oops. Let's do this. Fingers crossed. And that'll be us for this episode. It was literally enough. The first bell was 50%. I mean, that's unusual. Normally cotton contracts are quite lucrative. Maybe we made a tiny bit on top, I suppose. But anyway, not quite the bonus I was expecting, but that's all right. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.